Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know I had to take a break for a week because I was up in the Adirondacks with a camp for disabled girls and non-binary people. So I had an amazing time there. So I'm trying to get back into the swing of things but recently there was a comment on my video about my favorite murder and how Sword and Scale has also had its fair share of controversies. So I wanted to look into that a bit more because in college I did listen to Sword and Scale and I, I always got kind of an icky vibe because Sometimes the host, Mike Boudet, would go off on tangents and be ranting about mentally ill people and trans people and cancel culture, and it just made me uncomfortable, which was why I stopped, well, I stopped li listening to it, but I never really looked deeply into it or knew that it was something other people was, other people were talking about so i figured out i would make a video on it because i assume if if i didn't know all this stuff then probably a lot of people don't either so some of the some of the accusations made against him are that he is very inappropriate with female fans on social media, like if they comment on his posts, he'll DM them and say things like, oh, you're so hot, or can you send me a nude picture? And obviously that's just kind of gross. And it's really annoying being a woman and existing in public and having men constantly <laughs> bothering you. Like, you're just existing as a woman, not doing anything provocative or anything, and men are trying to slide into your DMs and sexualizing you. So, yeah. And I can read some of the screenshots that I've... Sorry, I'm just pulling it up on Reddit because I found it on Reddit. So, in one of these screenshots, he basically asked a, a woman on social media if all of the people from her town are that attractive, and then, and then he's like, oh, can you send me a nude, which is not appropriate given that he is a content creator that a lot of people look up to and he's doing that and it's just annoying being a woman on the internet and having to deal with that shit but also he has posted a bunch of transphobic shit calling trans women men and just being gross about it i, I even felt that way about the ezra mimic handless episode he, he did where I, I, from McCandless at some point identified as non-binary and he kept kind of cracking jokes and just being very icky about it and I did not love that but I am a cisgender woman so I never thought if it, I never knew if it was just me who had a, or if I was looking too deeply into it, but now I see that other people have voiced their concerns. Also, a few years back, he did a poll on what, what race or ethnicity his fans would prefer the, the victims of the crimes be. And this is extremely problematic, given that a lot of true crime podcasts and also just media in general will ignore cases 
of people of color, specifically black women, but also indig indigenous women. And so for him to make this poll and to base his next episodes off of it is really just gross. Because ultimately, and I know I'm being an optimist, but I think true crime creators should care more about creating real change than they should about popularity. But and the money that comes with popularity. But of course, who's going to listen to me? Nobody. Mike has also been accused of doxing people, which is extremely terrible. And he uses the N-word when people ask him what, what classic books he he would recommend he recommended people read books by Mark Twain because and his reasoning for this was because he uses the a a a n word a lot which is fucking gross but anyway he also has always really stigmatized mental illness and has blamed crimes on mental illness when we research does show that even people with severe mental illness which he characterizes severe mental illness as like schizophrenia and bipolar and dissociative identity disorder but in reality and i've taken psychology Horses on this, people with severe mental illnesses are more likely to be victims of crimes. And, and of course, that does come with the caveat that if people are using illicit drugs while they are experiencing a severe mental episode, then they may be more prone to violence, but that's a big caveat. That does not mean that everybody with a severe mental illness is going to be violent. And for him to perpetuate this is creating a lot of harm because people with severe mental illness are already at risk of institutionalization and unemployment and homelessness. So people with severe mental illness are already at a big disadvantage. And for somebody with such a big platform, he should not be perpetuating that myth that can cause real life harm. An another thing Mike did was on International Women's Day, he made a post on Instagram re reading, I do not understand dumb, see you next whose days. Maybe I should try taking one apart to see how it works. First of all, to call women the C word is disgusting, obviously especially when men do it but also not only that is you're a true crime podcast so to talk about dismembering a woman really 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 fucked up especially given that a lot of victims of crimes are women who did nothing to deserve being killed besides being a woman and existing. So the thing is, is Mike could have done a lot of good with his platform, but instead he chose to be an edge lord, which is always going to detract from whatever good you put out. And I'm not saying he's done no good, but I am saying that he has done lots of harm with his platform. Why would you 
make a misogynistic post on International Women's Day. Do you realize why we have International Women's Day? Because women around the world have less opportunities than men just for who we are. Not for not because we're not good or we're lazy or we're overly emotional like a lot of people like to argue, but just because we exist as a woman, we have less opportunities and are more likely to face violence in our lifetimes and not have access to education and other things. I just think Mike Boudet is another edgelord who rails against cancel culture because he knows that he, that when people are being held accountable, people like him are going to lose their platform because he has used his platform to just spew shit about women and marginalized people. And he doesn't want that. He just wants to say what he wants and to not be called out. He was at some, at some point removed as the host from Sword and Scale, but then he was, he was allowed back on the show. And yeah, I, I just, I don't understand true crime creators that rail against social justice because I would think that as somebody who talks a lot about victims of crimes, you, you would be more prone to, to want to further social justice because a lot of the people that are affected by these crimes are marginalized in some way. And that's about all I have to say today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.